I love Star Trek, which is why I hate Star Trek. Yeah, bad Star Trek. And today we're talking about drugs. D drugs, they're bad, right? Yeah, they're, they're bad. Drugs are bad. And we're going to talk about why you shouldn't. shouldn't. Oh. Where was I? Symbiosis. Yeah, we're talking about symbiotics. I don't know. Uh. <sighs> People, this is P-O-S-T-N-G, Symbiosis. Hey Kim, have you tried these peanut butter and Pringles? The episode opens with the Enterprise arriving at a star to study it. The star is spewing out all sorts of electromagnetic energy which really will have no purpose on the show other than that their sensors are a little fuzzy. And that's about it. The rest of this whole intro is nothing but padding, 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 hey, padding, 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 woo, padding, 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 Patty, Patty. Patty, won't you? So, after a minute of nothing important, we finally get down to it. Hey, Kim, you want to know what this could have been? Yeah, sure. Captain's Log, we've arrived at a star. It's dangerous, but we're going on anyway because we're explorers. Meanwhile, Wesley Crusher starts detecting some x-rays on the ship. <laughs> This will mean nothing at all. Well, well, at least if it doesn't kill him, it ought to make him sterile. And so Counselor Troy chimes in very hopefully to say, People are now tense. No. Obvious. And so they get closer to the sun. And Warp detects a distress signal. We're heading into the atmosphere. Please do something. We're going to burn up. I am Tajan, Captain of the Sanctuary. How can we help? I am no longer able to maintain this orbit. So, you know, dead I guess. <laughs> Tasha Yar suggests that they go with the tractor beam. As if it's a weapon of last resort to use. And so they go with it and it doesn't work. Thank you, Tasha Yar, for patting something other than the chest of your uniform. Patty, patty, patty. Ah! Apparently, the ship can no go. I don't think they get it. I'm showing the clip. We are Packlets. Our ship is the Mondor. It is broken. Data is able to detect the problem, but the Tardos can't even fix their own ship, even when they get the parts. So you be cool. You have the necessary tools to realign the coil? Do we smoke it? Sorry, nobody here knows anything about it. We need help. So, Tasha figures out a way she can beam them over and tries to talk them through it. And then she starts getting snippy about it. Mark 2, 6, 8. Got it. Hey, hey, don't make me come over there and seduce you. Patty, patty, patty. Patty, patty, patty. Ah. 
They tell the stoners to get on the pad and beam themselves over, and instead they beam over their cargo. Number one, did you get them off? Captain, please! So Captain Picard can't seem to understand any possible reason why these aliens would make their cargo more important than the crew. Well, I can think of lots of reasons. Reading six life forms, but I can't get a solid lock. We have no choice. Energize. Two are lost, sir. But we saved four. But the stoners don't even care about the two people who were lost. They only care that the cargo was saved. Instantly, the two stoners and the two effete people who apparently owned the cargo start arguing over trade negotiations. The goods were never delivered. They were destroyed with your ship. Hence the deal was incomplete. Hence possession of the Felicium remains ours. We need it. I refer you back to Sub Rosa for the mop debate. Now give it to me! That's my mop! Not anymore, buddy. And so they start a Sith fight. A sissy Sith fight. Say that ten times fast. That, 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 Ow! Stop this. Now! Ah. Well, if the Enterprise hadn't installed those shag carpets... So Tasha, eventually, breaks the fight up. Behave yourselves, gentlemen. It's an interesting ability. The question is, how do I defend against it? Hmm, how to counter it, maybe? Don't let them touch you in the first place? You know, since you have guns? <sighs> you know, Tasha, if you're this dumb, you're not going to last much longer on the Enterprise. And so, back on the bridge, Troy finds it odd that the crew aren't upset about their lost people. And so, the crew members meet with Picard, who agrees that he will give them the parts and the training so that they can fix their last ships. By the way, does this actor look familiar to Star Trek fans? He's David Marcus. What does that mean for the story? That Mary Futrick needed work. Moving on. And now they continue to argue about ownership, only a little more civil this time. And apparently it's crucial medicine for a planetary plague. Cargo you have impounded is the only hope of life for our people. I suddenly don't like those other two people. Gee, I wonder why. That single shipment of Felicium represents an enormous investment. We can't just give it away. Yo, boy. Looks like these people are Roddenberry's straw men of evil pharmaceutical companies. It turns out our two stoner people are also carriers for this plague. Which maybe we could have learned if they'd gone to sick bay first, but it's not like going to sick bay is the normal first step. Oh wait, yes it is! We need help. So, in Sekpei, Dr. Crusher can find no infection, nor any reason to explain all the symptoms that the Onarans, that's the stoner people with the plague, have. Oh, and Dr. Crusher doesn't like the Breckians much at all. They're the effete people who actually own the medicine who refuse to give it away. No green pump sex for you! This is crack. So Picard requests two doses for the two Onarans' immediate use. And the Breckians agree. 